European officials say it's being orchestrated by a vengeful authoritarian leader. We're talking about thousands of migrants attempting to cross Belarus into neighboring Poland as the fear of a humanitarian crisis is brewing. Our Inez de la Quetara traveled to the forest where the harrowing situation is unfolding. It's past midnight and we are deep in the primeval forests of eastern Poland, the European Union's final frontier. They are somewhere in here. We're with these activists searching for a group of migrants who've just crossed into Poland from neighboring Belarus. They've been in these woods for nearly two weeks. They don't hear us because it's uh, we Yeah, they, they can't hear our whistling. And here, every second counts. Hi, guys. If they have any hopes of helping them, these activists must get to the migrants before Polish border guards do. So these activists received a call that there's a group of migrants in this general area, but it's the middle of the night, it's pitch black, and the challenge now is finding them. Hi, hi. We are not the police. We finally find the group we're looking for. Three young men from war-torn Yemen, freezing and starving. We will die. We were, we were there 15, year, 15 days without food, without anything. Okay, the, the, so Belarusian, the, the Belarusian army said, if you saw you again, we will kill you. They took everything from us. This is Rami, a computer engineer with two friends, one of them with no shoes. These are feet warmers and we, we can give them a couple of power socks just to warm. They tell us the Poles pushed them back into Belarus four times. They say Belarusian troops beat them, ignoring pleas they were starving and sick. They don't care what happens to you after. It would be better for them if we died. This is how you've been eating? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're just picking corn off the fields? Yeah. The activists helping them fill out the paperwork needed to claim asylum right there on the forest floor. But because it's the Polish border guards who will process their claims, the migrants now face a tough decision to decide whether to call the very people who've been pushing them back into the forest. If you want to get asylum in Poland, we need to call the guards. So, uh, yeah? will they take me to the border or to the... We don't know. We hope that they will not take you to yes, the border. Yes, because we have the TV. Yeah, we have like a strong backup from international TV, you know, so it's like... We, we will not stay here. With, here, with you here until they come. Good luck for you. Two of the men decide to risk it, but 23-year-old Turkey Khalid left his brother behind in Belarus. Incredibly, after stocking up on supplies, he decides to head back into the woods alone. Armed Polish border guards eventually arrive. The activists say that because of our cameras there, they're being polite. Come on, follow me. Where are you taking them? In the Polish border guard in the Lipsk. Can you assure us that they're not going to be sent back over the border and that they will be able to claim asylum? O tym zadecyduje komendant. Komendant. Tak. He, they cannot assure you. We're on the front lines of what the European Union says is a hybrid war on Europe, accusing Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko of using migrants as weapons, purposefully luring them into Belarus from countries like Iraq and Syria by promising them easy access to Europe, then sending them over Belarus's border. EU officials believe it's his way of getting revenge after European countries supported the pro-democracy movement in Belarus and imposed sanctions on his regime. Thousands of migrants have crossed into Europe from Belarus in just the last few months. Poland and Lithuania have now moved to block the flow, declaring states of emergency, erecting fences, deploying thousands of extra border troops, and they're pushing migrants back into Belarus without letting them claim asylum, a move that legal experts say is illegal under international law. But Belarus is refusing to take the migrants back, and they wind up trapped in a no-man's land, stuck in the forest between the two countries, caught up in a never-ending game of human ping-pong. <laughs> At least five people have died already, according to Polish and Belarusian officials. Activists fear the number is higher. I want to give you a sense of the conditions these migrants are facing. They're having to walk for days through forests just like this one. And then in some cases, this miles and miles of swampland. That means they're getting wet. They're having to trek through mud. And that's on top of the rain, the cold and the lack of access to food and water. In the Polish city of Bialystok, we meet Bushra Almoalam, who spent a harrowing 20 days in the woods. I don't want to remember. It's difficult to remember. 
I still have the nightmares when I were when I was at the swamp. And they were kicking us, each one, Belarus border guard and Polish border guard. Each one is playing this miserable game with our souls. <laughs> She says Belarusian forces separate people into groups and then bust them to the border. It's a bad war and we were the weapons. Each of the migrants we spoke to recount a similar story, that they'd heard it would be easy to cross from Belarus into Europe. Over the summer, Lukashenko openly threatening to flood Europe with migrants and drugs. We will not stop anyone, he said. The Belarusian dictator started offering visa-free entry into Belarus for dozens of new countries, including many in the Middle East. Freedom! Freedom! And European officials are accusing Lukashenko of adding new flight routes to bring migrants in. The influx getting so bad, the EU had to ask Iraq to temporarily suspend flights to Minsk. Lithuania says it saw 50 times the number of crossings it normally does since the start of the year. The migrants who did manage to make it into the country, roughly 4,100 of them, are now stuck in limbo, held inside refugee camps. We went inside the Kibartai camp for migrant men, a former prison where inmates were moved out just a month ago to make space. There are about 700 migrants being kept at this camp, mostly from Iraq. They're being kept at the site of a former prison. You can see the barbed wire up here, the guard tower right there, and they're not being allowed to leave this facility. Locked up behind those huge steel doors, hundreds waiting for their asylum claims to be processed. Hi, I'm a reporter for American TV, ABC News. Telling us they feel like prisoners. Families and the elderly are kept in different facilities. Yes. Here, children are starting school, learning to count in Lithuanian. Of the more than 600 asylum applications filed in Lithuania from those who crossed over from Belarus this year, so far, not a single one has been approved. Uh, it's illegal to turn asylum seekers away, isn't it? Those people are not asylum seekers. Those people coming from a safe country, Belarus, and they arrived to Belarus legally. It means they came as uh, tourists, uh, having visas, uh, documents, and so on. And before we left Poland, we went back to check on Rami. Uh, is he with you? Yes. The border guards wouldn't let us see him, but they did tell us he's been allowed to apply for asylum. It'll be months before Rami knows whether he'll be allowed to stay in Europe. For now, he's stuck in limbo with hundreds of others just like him, caught in the middle of a cynical political game. In Ezdelikotera, ABC News, on the Belarusian border. And we have Inez uh, joining us live now for more on this story. First of all, Inez, what incredible reporting. I mean, you were drawn in by the emotion, those being impacted directly by this uh, outstanding job. Uh, what is Poland saying about how it's handling the influx of migrants? Hey, good morning, Kara, and thank you for running this story on your show. Uh, Poland has remained rather quiet here. They're not exactly jumping at the opportunity to talk about this. We repeatedly reached out to different uh, Polish officials. We tried to get an interview with President Duda. We were told he was too busy. We tried to get a written statement from him. That request went unanswered. But what they're saying publicly is that they feel this is the solution to this crisis, is to keep pushing people back, to not let anybody enter Poland. And that's how they feel they'll get a Belarusian dictator or Alexander Lukashenko to stop sending people across the border. They feel that uh, if they keep pushing people away, those migrants will inevitably have to stay in Belarus. They'll, they'll be uh, kind of stuck in Belarus. And that's the last thing Lukashenko wants. He doesn't want to be bringing in tens of thousands of migrants into his country. So they are staying firm that, that this is the solution here. And I'll point out that's also what we're hearing from Lithuanian officials. They feel the only way out of this is to prevent people from crossing over. Mm. And we, we definitely got a feel uh, for, for how this is, is working. But give us more context, if you will, about this operation working to lure the migrants to Belarus and then funneling them over to the border. Yes, it's a really complex operation. It starts with this visa-free uh, kind of system that Lukashenko has set up. So he's waived visa requirements for people traveling from a number of countries, including many in the Middle East and in Africa as well. I'll say the vast majority of migrants we spoke with were from places like Iraq, Yemen, Syria, 
There are also migrants coming in from places like the DRC and Nigeria. And these people are able to come to Belarus without having to get tourist visas, without having to kind of file any additional paperwork. So that's really simplifying the travel process for them. So that's step one. Step two is actually getting these migrants into Belarus, so ferrying them from their countries to uh, Belarus. And in order to do that, EU officials are saying that, that Lukashenko has actually uh, set up a, a system where he's set up new flight routes bringing these migrants from their countries to Belarus. So the, the, the situation got especially ba bad with uh, Iraq, and uh, EU officials had to ask the, the government of Iraq to suspend flights from Iraq to Minsk, uh, and so as to kind of um, avoid the problem, avoid having these migrants even come in to Belarus. That's step two, getting these migrants here. And step three is uh, what happens to these migrants once they're actually in the country. And, and we know that, uh, you know, the, the, what we've heard from migrants is that a number of them are being uh, bused, you know, put on buses, taken to the border. Lithuanian officials have released videos showing Belarusian, uh, uh, you know, border guard actually escorting these migrants to the border, whether on foot or in kind of vehicles, telling them where to go, at what time of day to cross, you know, telling them that this, this is what they've assessed being the, to be the safest route into uh, Poland. And I'll point out, we also spoke to a man who is a defected Belarusian officer. Uh, he was the man in charge of Division Three, which is the Belarusian kind of unit in charge of illegal migration. He claims that it used to be that Belarus, uh, the, 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 this Belarusian unit, Division Three, had uh, orders to keep track of the migrants that were coming into Belarus, and that they have recently been ordered to uh, let these migrants kind of have free range and, and, and not keep track of them and let them kind of cross into Europe if they need to. Well, Inez uh, de la Quatera, uh, incredibly impactful reporting. We will follow this uh, to the very end with you. Appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank you, Kira. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.